And so there's a couple of really, really simple Jinshin practices that maybe we could go through if we have time for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That don't necessarily need to involve the hands. Um, and it, so just being comfortable sitting, lying, walking, standing, whatever you feel like. And just giving a little bit more sense of space in the back of your head, in the back of your neck. And that could include a little bit of a physical movement, slightly lengthening, but it could just be a, a, a nearly invisible or invisible sense of letting there be some space in the base of your brain, the back of your skull. And that it might include slightly bowing the head forward to, to give a little more space in the back. And then we could kind of attend to the front of us and start to allow the forehead to relax and be off duty. Maybe allowing the face to soften. Just noticing how is this for, for your mouth and your tongue? Would there be a way of letting the tongue rest in the, the base of the mouth, the basin of the mouth? And does just a little bit of softening or relaxing or soothing in the face. And if, if you feel like by paying attention, it's getting more tense, you could even just gently sort of stroke down the face if you felt like it in, in case that felt like it might help for your face to be off duty a little bit so if you find some changes towards softening or relaxing or being off duty in the forebrain and in the face in the mouth letting that kind of have some effect lower down in the front of the body or noticing how is that for the chest? And so this is already just in slow motion, one stage or one way of tuning in. Just a little more space in the neck and back of the head. And the possibility of some softening in the forehead, the forebrain and the face, and maybe letting a sense of softening sort of trickle down to the chest and heart area. And we could just continue from here into another possible happening. So it could happen that by leaving some more space in the back of your head and letting your busy front brain be a little more off duty, not so much pressure, no demand. And with the face softening, no need to be somebody special, no need to be what you think other people might want you to be, et cetera, just a little off duty in our presentation. And allowing that maybe some softening might kind of come down like a little gentle waterfall to the chest. And so that's what we've done as the first kind of stage, but it could happen that a little smile comes to your mouth, kind of for no reason. Or we could, play with leaving room for some kind of smile to sort of trickle up to the face. 
And there can be a kind of fake it till you make it approach of just putting a little bit of lift into the corners of your mouth and giving that a little time. And so, so sometimes the facial expression does actually change the inner atmosphere. Or if we feel kind of safe and comfortable enough that a smile could be allowed, we wouldn't want to necessarily force it. But if we feel, oh, the possibility that there could be a smile on my face and that that could trickle up maybe from way deep down in me, some kind of lift on the two sides. And it could be in response to softening down the middle front that just a lift happens. And sometimes just with permission for that to happen, it might happen. So that, that's another, just a slight smile with a slightly bowed head. Could be helpful for some people sometimes to kind of contact a different inner atmosphere where there's more room to include all that we are, including some kind of spaciousness that allows everything to be. So kind of playfulness that there's no way to be form and formless, but here we are. And then lastly, a third thing that we could, that could happen or we could add would be just bringing the hands into a prayer position, the palms together at the chest. So that could be all together with more space in the back, softening in the front of the head. Maybe a little smile, maybe not. And maybe the hands come together, maybe not, but just letting that position, that relationship of hands to each other and to the rest of the body, whatever the effect of that might be to give it a few minutes to infiltrate, to kind of slowly infiltrate your inner atmosphere. That's another option. So those are some very, very slight positions. And then continuing in that position, if you like, or just with your eyes open, casual, there's a, a breath that can be, for some people, really, really revelatory and relieving and helpful. And that would just be starting with a longer out breath and maybe a few longer out breaths. And we now know that physiologically a longer out breath does help to relax. It's a direct way of speaking to our physiology, just a little bit longer out breath. And then we could allow a sense of feeling the front of the body relaxing down with an out breath. So it could feel like breathing out down the front. Letting the out breath just be a little bit longer. Tiny bit. And whenever you wish, we could add the in breath coming up the back, a sense of filling up with life, goodness and energy. Breathing out down the front, softening the front, a kind of waterfall of energy gently down the front with the out breath. And then something like energy or water filling up the back of the body with the in breath, with what they call limitless life abundance, translated from the Japanese. And it's totally fine to practice this way, just very loosely and gently breathing out down the front. And kind of enjoying 
that physiologically the outbreath is relaxing. So we can bring that relaxation in the front of the body to our appreciation. And then breathing in, filling with energy up the back, we can appreciate the generosity of the breath, both giving relaxation with the out breath and filling with vitality, life energy, filling up the back with the in breath. Feeling the more, maybe more brightness or noticing what you notice is different about in breath and out breath. Maybe, maybe even with your eyes closed, it's a bit brighter with the in breath. Or what do you feel? We're not required to feel what everybody else feels, even in our shared physiology. We're unique. And then we could get a little more specific. It's not too complicated, but it would be feeling again, the back of the head. Only if you want to, you could bring your hands to the top of your neck, the kind of seam between the neck and the back bottom of the skull. So on each side of the spine at the very top, right under the base of the skull in the back is our starting point for the out breath, which then it would be a feeling or imagining of energy with the out breath coming up the back of the head, across the top of the head, and then down the front of the body, across the top of the feet, and then coming to the base of the big toe on the sole side of the foot. That would be the ending point of the out breath. And it can be nice to bring fingers, fingertips to the base of the big toe on the sole of the foot. And in the case where someone, someone's feet are missing for whatever reason, it could just be imagining legs or it could just be feeling the base of your body. And then just around towards the back. And then this is the same place where the in-breath begins, the base of the big toe on the sole side of the foot, across the sole of the foot, and then up the back of the legs, up the back to the top of the spine, just under the base of the skull. And it can be helpful to practice this breath with a certain number of breaths just to be able to stay tuned. So it could be that we decide to do nine breaths that way, breathing out down the front. Beginning, we begin with making space, letting go, leaving room. And then breathing in, letting the in-breath come in, letting naturally the energy fill in. We don't have to make anything happen. Filling up the back of the body the top of the, the spine on either side of the spine, just under the skull. And whatever pause happens between in-breath and out-breath, and then the out-breath. Up the rest of the back of the body and then over and down. So we can practice this breath in silence and stillness, but also while walking, can be with eyes closed, but can be with eyes open. It can be helpful in a stressful situation sometimes just to have in mind a little bit of uh, breathing out down the front, breathing in up the back. And it can be more loose or more specific. It still seems to be helpful. Just in, in kind of coming into our human being-ness that we're allowed to be on the planet Earth. We're allowed to belong to life as yourself, as you already are, not some different way. We don't have to earn a place. We're already in our place.
And it's also possible to play with that breath while holding a finger. So if, if there's a stressful situation, maybe an exam, holding the little finger can be helpful for performance anxiety. So we can have the breathing out down the front while holding the little finger and breathing in up the back. So those are some ways of, I would say discovering, playing with, but also discovering your own way with Jinshin, letting it come from within more than imposing it from without. Realizing we have permission to be and to be well. Thank you so much for guiding us through that. You're very welcome. It's fun, fun for me. <laughs>